What's up guys, everything Apple Pro here, and as part of my mini series, I'm gonna be sharing some new information regarding the iPhone 7, 7 Plus, and 5SE. This is probably the most feature-packed video I've produced. There's just so much to share, so I'm gonna try and power through all of it. Regarding all of these new devices and all the new features, patents, you know, rumors, details, there's so much to cover, so here we go. So to begin, the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus are gonna be the very first iPhones in the entire lineup to feature stereo speakers. So analyst Blaine Curtis and another associate basically said that the removal of the headphone jack will leave an area in the iPhone shell. Naturally, Apple's gonna fill that up with better sound system and includes a new amp for that separate speaker built by Surus Logic. So I'm very excited for that. Before, we've never had two speakers in an iPhone. Now we do, and I'm excited to see how much louder that'll be than the iPhone 6S. I mean. I use a portable speaker when I go anywhere with friends or stuff like that, but it'd be nice to be able to use your phone and still have very listenable audio. Now, the iPhone 7 will not ship with dynamic noise cancellation, also known as active noise cancellation. It's a technology used with Bluetooth headphones to filter out background noise, especially useful when you're talking on the phone with someone. So what this means is basically, Apple does not see this technology justifiable. Instead of shipping AirPods, those wireless headphones I talked about in my last video, they will be shipping lightning-based headphones. So wired, that are gonna be connected to that lightning port on the iPhone 7, pretty much keeping that old digital codec instead of upgrading it. So in a nutshell, Apple will not be shipping wireless headphones in the box with the iPhone 7, instead lightning-based cable ones. It might be possible that they'll be sold as an optional accessory, but at this point in time, the plans for that have been postponed to 2017 and the possible release of the iPhone 7S. This one actually got me very happy. Wireless charging has all but been confirmed for the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus release. You know, Apple's actually been testing this technology for the last two generations of the iPhone. It never made it to the light of day because of the difficulties associated with charging through the metal shell of the iPhone. That makes it so much more difficult. Notice how most Android phones with this technology either have a glass or plastic backing. You know, it's a lot easier to transmit electricity through those materials. Now, Apple's got a new patent that they've included in the iPhone 7 that allows energy metal transmission to be a lot easier. So the iPhone 7 will ship with wireless charging. However, you know, the analyst also does warn that this could be pulled within months of the release, as well as waterproof or water resistance to the iPhone 7. It's unknown whether this will be a proprietary standard or this will be the industry standard or the QI charging, so that's unknown at the moment. Now, Bloomberg is also reporting that Apple is working on a wireless charging technology that allows you to charge from a distance. So instead of having your iPhone sit right on the mat, you could have it at a distance and still be able to charge. Now, there's a huge, huge hurdle to overcome in this technology, and that's the further you get away from the charging source, the bigger the loss of power becomes. So it's an issue. Apple is working on this technology though, and that's very exciting. Imagine being able to charge your phone from a matter of feet from the charging source instead of having it sit on it. Doesn't seem like a big deal, but you know, it'd be cool nonetheless. So it's unlikely we'll see that this year, Bloomberg reports 2017 release more likely. So there are two new design changes in the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus that may take effect. And now it's unknown at the moment what it'll look like as a whole, but these two little things, you know, we do have a good clue on. So first off, the reduction of antenna bands. So it's not entirely clear whether or not Every antenna band will be removed, but we do know there will be less antenna band on the actual iPhone. It's very entirely possible that you know several entire strips from the back could be removed. We could just see it on the edges, on the very tops, make it you know more discreet, not in your face antenna bands. Also, the iPhone 7 could feature a flat camera lens. So instead of it protruding, thanks to some new technology I covered in my last video, we could be seeing an entirely flat camera lens. And this goes hand in hand with a new rumor about all the details on the camera. So the iPhone 7 Plus could feature a dual lens setup while the iPhone 7 has just a single unit camera, which would differentiate the 7 Plus and the 7. As we know, the 6S and 6S Plus do have some big features that, you know, that they differentiate in right now, but the 7 and 7 Plus will have even more. 7 Plus will feature the 256 gigabyte storage option. It'll have two gigabytes of RAM. And now this latest rumor, a dual camera setup. Now, not only is there gonna be a dual camera setup on the iPhone 7 Plus, Ming-Chi Kao is actually reporting that there will be two versions of the iPhone 7 Plus with varying different camera sensors. It's unknown whether there are changes that could be between them. Now, this guy is the most reliable Apple analyst. And what he's saying is that there could be one version of the iPhone 7 Plus with just a regular camera lens setup, just one lens, the other with that dual 
dual lens setup. And that dual lens setup could include optical zoom, which would be a nice feature to have differentiating it from the iPhone 7 Plus standard version and then the iPhone 7 even. So he's expecting the iPhone 7 Plus with the dual lens setup to be about 30% to 35% of sales overall of the iPhone 7 Plus. Now, Sony's CFO, basically one of the major higher ups, has spoken about the future of phones in general. And he's saying that dual lens setups for camera will make a huge, huge appearance in 2017. Now, it's unknown whether or not that Sony will be shipping the sensor for Apple, but it's very likely the CFO is giving a lot of hints about the future in general. The iPhone 7 could very likely use Sony's dual lens setup using technology from Lynx Imaging in the last video. So a very nice collaboration between companies here. We could be seeing something very special. Now, it was expected earlier that two companies would produce the actual A10 chips for the iPhone 7, but now a new contract has been detailed. Basically, TSMC will produce all of the chips for the iPhone 7, taking a huge chunk of business away from Samsung. So last year, TSMC actually produced a lot of the chips for the iPhone 6S, and they were the superior of the two between Samsung and TSMC. They were 16 nanometers, you know, two nanometers bigger, but they were more efficient and they did run a little bit cooler. Apple says officially, the difference was only two to three percent, but some users reported a much better difference in the favor of TSMC. So I think it's good that Apple chose them over Samsung and the process of the new A10 chip will be 10 nanometers. So, you know, it's gonna be very powerful, very difficult chip to make. Hopefully TSMC can keep up with that demand. So there's actually a few new patents that Apple has filed, been granted, and have been published that I thought were really interesting. First off is a new Touch ID patent. Basically, different fingerprints activated on the Touch ID sensor would produce different results in iOS. It's unknown detail wise what this could do, but let's say you put one fingerprint on, it'll open up a certain application, put another one on, it'll do something else entirely. Also, Touch ID, the home button itself, could feature 3D touch-like pressure sensitivity support. Not only could it detect the amount of pressure you're applying, but also in what direction you're applying it in, making this a makeshift joystick. Imagine that. It wouldn't look any different, but it would help so much in some games. It'd be like, you know, you turn your phone sideways and you have so much better support for gaming. And this patent actually ties in with one filed or granted three months ago, basically a panic mode for uh, future iPhone versions, future iOS versions with Touch ID. You would put a certain finger on, say your pinky, you would never use that in any other situation, but you put it on the Touch ID sensor, it enters a panic mode, pretty much enabling your microphone, GPS, and camera to be activated and send data over to emergency services. Pretty much if you're in danger, they would have this as evidence, you know, whatever it may be. I thought that was a pretty ingenious, you know, thought. However, it's unknown how likely this is to appear in future versions of iPhones or iOS I just thought it was a really cool patent itself. And this one, this one is really interesting. There is a new patent that has been granted for Apple. Basically, it's a copy completely of Samsung's Air View. It'll allow you to hover your finger over the display and have things pop up or react to your finger hovering there, even your palm. In the actual details of the patent, it, you know, it explains it almost completely like Samsung's Air View. So I thought that was interesting how these would clash. Samsung takes 3D Touch, Apple takes Air View and adds it to iOS. So that patent has been granted and it's very likely we could see something like that in the future version of the iPhone. So that's the iPhone 7. Couple little details about the 5SE. It was previously rumored that it would come in a hot pink color. Now that's been canceled out just a rose gold. So we'll be seeing the same rose gold color as the iPhone 6S and 6S Plus in the 5SE. Also, the 5SE will be announced on March 15th alongside an updated Apple Watch and iPad Air 3. I did cover that in my last video as well. The release will be on March 18th, very soon after. Because these aren't you know, super high priority Apple products, they will be available to ship very shortly after the event. So guys, that's uh, just about it. All the latest info on the iPhone 7, future iPhones, and the 5SE. I think it's very interesting to always learn about these patents, these features, and Apple is so likely you know, to go back and forth between them. Some rumors say Apple will add this, then they change their mind, and you know, it's just interesting to see, in general, what happens. Anyways, guys, thanks so much for watching. Be sure to check out the last video, and the one before that, I detailed a lot of other patents in those that I didn't cover in this extensively. Have a great day, guys. Stay tuned for any more news on the iPhone 7 and other devices. Peace.